How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the Ford Type Make You Loco channel. So today we have a real oddball concern with this Ford 543 valve Triton engine. And it's, it, the, the fix is just going to blow you away. You're going to not believe the fix on here. I should have probably done the fix and the repairs in real time. Uh, but just trust me, this was the fix. So the problem with this engine is that it has a real loud, oddball, very elusive belt chirp noise. And before you change the channel, no, we're not going after a belt tracking issue or belt and pull the issue. This belt chirp noise is inside of the engine. And what I found is that it's coming from the driver's side valve cover, which has me even more worried. So a little backstory in this vehicle, it's a 2005 Ford F-150 543 valve Triton that has 245,000 miles on it. It came from the south, so you know the backbone, the body, really good shape, customer just bought it, but it has 245,000 miles on it, so it needs just about everything, including its very first timing job. I'll say that again. Very first timing job at 245,000 miles for all the naysayers out there that hate the 543 valve and say it's a piece of junk engine. Not so. You maintain it, it will reward you. Proof in the pudding right here. So he, he brought it up and he said, I just bought it. I did a few small things on it. I need you to go through it mechanically from front to rear. I said, great, bring it up. We'll see what it needs. And we went through it. So, I mean, this thing had everything done to it. So a full timing job, pan drop, roller followers, front suspension, uh, all driveline services on here, door jar switches. Uh, we did rear axle seals, parking brake shoes, front brakes. We did a heater core on it the other day. I mean, this thing's had everything done to it. It was kind of neglected uh, by the previous owner, plus all the mileage. So we went through it, and like I said, everything is new. Pull these belts. I, everything is new on here. And we get it done last night, pushing the heater core back into place, putting the last few heater hoses onto there, vacuum filled cooling system, at engine oil. We're excited to start it, run it, get it out of here, get paid, all that stuff, and move on to other projects. We start it up. Everything sounds great. Everything's great. It sounds like a brand new truck. Everything is checking out. Everything is checking out. Then the engine starts to heat up a little bit uh, to operating temperature. And then it, as the idle drops, to hot idle, 550 to 600 RPM, we start getting this belt chirp noise. Like, how is that even possible? Everything's new. So my mind starts going wild. Okay, it's, it's uh, you know, a bad pulley. The, the belt uh, is not tracking right. Uh, the alternator we did not change, and those can have dry bearings to them. So first thing I did, of course, shut it down, pull the belt off, run it. That's a classic old trick for isolating anything in the FIAD system. Did that, ran it without a belt, noise is still there, as prominent as ever. Okay, belt back on, run it again, and we ran it, and I'm listening to everything on there, and it's coming from the driver's side valve cover. Now I'm going nuts, thinking we've been on and off this vehicle for the past week, did I forget to torque down the cam caps, is one of the new Ford Roller followers, has one of them failed? You know, it's a mass-produced item, anything can fail if it's mass-produced. Um, is there even oil getting up to the heads? Are they running dry? I'm um, thinking all this wild stuff in my head. And I start step back and I start thinking about it. And I, I said, if, if there was no oil getting up there, there'd be a lot of valve train noise. This thing sounded like new, except for the belt chirp. So what I did in the end is I, I stepped back and I busted out some old school tools to isolate it. And you guys are not gonna believe what the fix was on here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to let you listen to it, and then I'll show you guys how I kind of diagnosed it and isolated it, and you know then we'll show you what actually failed and what the fix is on here. So the usual stethoscope listening everywhere gave me no results, so I had to go old school in this one to figure it out. And I want to share it with you guys, even though you may never come across it, because if you do, and you bring it to a shop, they're going to hear this noise inside the engine that sounds like inside the engine, and they're going to start throwing some high numbers at you for internal engine work or a new engine right away because they can't find it. So let's go to the vehicle, take a listen, and let you guys know what the fix is just in case one day you may come across this, and some shops out there may come across this because it will happen again in the future on other vehicles, I'm sure. Let's take a listen. 
All right, so this is what it sounds like. Usually happens loudest at low RPM, you know, six, 700 RPM. And if I stick a piece of tube up to my ear and then stick it around over there, it seems to be seven and eight uh, that are making the noise, especially eight. We're gonna pull plugs and figure it out. All right, guys, I think I have it fixed. Take a listen. That's how all Ford 5.4 liter three valve engines to sound after a timing job, like new. That's how you sound from the factory. So that's great, you fixed it. What was the fix? Well, it was a classic loose spark plug concern. So these spark plugs torque out at 25 foot pounds and the customer changed the plugs and the coils trying to fix his drivability concern before he brought the truck out for all this work and the timing job and all that stuff. So he went in there, he changed all the plugs out, used Ford plugs, Ford coils, good to go. And they were pretty darn tight, but for whatever reason, number seven, you can see that the seat right here is clean, clean, clean. And all of a sudden you can see right there, you see it right there? It was not seating and the gases were squeaking right past it, quite literally. So when you have an exhaust manifold leak or any kind of leak, and it squeaks right past a very small orifice, it will kind of do the same thing as if you were whistling. You're pushing a lot of air past a small area and it makes that squeak noise. So every time there was a pulse, you know, a combustion pulse, it would make the squeak noise. And it would of course go faster and louder with um, RPMs. So he went in and he tightened them properly and all that stuff, but it seems like this plug was either uh, not manufactured right or something because if you look at the seat, you can look at the seats. Let's see if I can get it closer. I'm going to try to focus for you guys. So it's not the best, but I'll go back. The seat on here on the plug itself is not all chewed up, which means the seat most likely on the head side is okay. So all I did was put in a new Ford plug and torqued it to spec, and now we're good to go. Just like that. So anytime I'm in here for a timing job and I pull this stuff apart for a timing job, um, I'll usually go through and I'll check when I pull the coils out, I'll bring the boot up and I'll sniff the boot to see if I smell those raw exhaust gases. And I did the same thing on this one, I smelled it. Um, usually it's colored, the boot will get colored with brown soot from the combustion gases. This one was not because it was the way it was new. And it's only been in there for how many, you know, 100 miles maybe. But I still sniff them and I sniffed it and there was one that was, that had a raw exhaust gas smell. So when I finished the timing job, I did go through and tighten all these down again to spec for the customer, like, like I always do. And it just wasn't enough because like I said, either the plug was made wrong or something, defective in some way. So I said, forget it, I'm not playing around. I put a new plug in there after cleaning the seat area, torque to spec, and there we go. So usually when these plugs are loose, they get really loose. They can even eject out of there like the old two valves, they can do it. But what usually happens because there is that gap in there and there's no sealing of the combustion chamber. Whoa, sorry guys, this camera is way out there, isn't it? So what happens usually when they don't tighten these down to spec and it lifts from the seat, yeah, you get the gas smell, yeah, you get noises, usually a knocking noise. Um, but again, this one was tight, so it made this, this squeak noise because it was so tight and it was a very small area that was blowing past. But usually when they're not torqued to spec, they get this tick noise, almost like a valve train noise, raw exhaust gas smell, raw fuel smell, stuff like that. And because there is, uh, the seat is not seating anymore, when it comes down for the intake stroke, right, the piston's going down, 
and it's creating that vacuum in the cylinder, it actually draws in outside unmetered air to the cylinder, comes up with this air fuel mixture that's now lean for the amount of air that's in there, and they, they, they run hot, real hot, red hot, so hot that the ground strap here will actually burn off of here, totally, it'll just disintegrate over a couple thousand miles, 15,000 miles. Whereas this one was a little bit different, it just wasn't seating right, look at that. That's an odd concern, but I'm like, is my new roller followers really causing that noise? Because if you guys didn't know it also, roller bearings, when they start to dry out, when they start to fail, and they start grinding around in there, they can cause that same kind of belt chirp noise. We had that issue in the 6.0 liter power stroke engines, the roller tappets down in the heart of the engine uh, would cause that, that noise, that, that belt chirping noise. So whenever a 6.0 came in, we would always check and, and make sure that that wasn't an issue. And we'd usually find needle bearings down in the uh, pump. So it can't happen due to roller bearings also. That's why I was thinking the only thing that's really changed is I put in a full-timing job in roller followers. But nope, it was just a simple plug, thankfully, uh, because the rest of this truck is done and it needs to go back home and I need to get paid. It's been about here about a week and it's time for it to go. I have plenty of other work going on here and everybody else wants their vehicle fixed. But I wanted to show you guys another oddball issue with the, five, the Ford 543 valve uh, because you may come across it, may not be able to diagnose it going crazy, and I want to be able to help you guys fix your Ford yourself. See you next time, guys.